Alan Pattaya lost her successful IT company because of a fabricated tax debt. Six years of my life effectively fighting the tax office. By that stage, the business had been unable to sustain itself. We'd lost our investors. Uh, as a family, we'd pretty much financially had everything at risk. Alan eventually struck a confidential settlement with the ATO, but she wishes she had better protections. I would have been able to access my rights under the law, not at the mercy of tax officers within the ATO. Taxpayer rights in the United States are entrenched in the law. The Taxpayer Bill of Rights sets out various obligations, like the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax and the right to a fair and just tax system. In Australia, there's a charter that works like a code of conduct. Compensation usually depends on the ATO determining whether someone's entitled to it. The Taxpayer Charter is a taxation office uh, policy. It's not law, it's not legislation. And our experience is that we find that the ATO breach their own policy on a very consistent basis. Small business advocate Ken Phillips says a US-style Taxpayer Bill of Rights would minimise the number of disputes and the time it takes to resolve them. Here, it's quite normal for a dispute with the Taxation Office to go on for five, six, seven, ten years even. That's just not fair. Tax Ombudsman Karen Payne gets up to 3,000 complaints a year from taxpayers in dispute with the ATO. The key complaints that we received are taxpayers who don't understand why they've got a debt or why they're not getting their refund or why they're not eligible, for example, to receive JobKeeper. She's just released a report calling for immediate changes to the existing taxpayer charter. She says these rights should become law. You can attach sanctions for not observing taxpayer rights. A spokeswoman for the ATO said changes in law are a matter for government, but that the ATO seeks to work collaboratively with taxpayers to avoid issues escalating into disputes. The law says that taxpayers are guilty until they prove themselves innocent. That means the tax office doesn't have to give you reasons for why you owe them money. This has raised questions about whether we should reverse the onus of proof for some small businesses and individuals. Federal MP Jason Falinski, who chairs a parliamentary committee that scrutinises the ATO, says there may be political appetite to do that. I think there are specific instances that impact mum and dad Australians, just ordinary taxpayers who get caught in this drift net of anti-tax avoidance laws that probably shouldn't apply to them. Helen says aside from having legal protections, taxpayers need an ombudsman who has stronger powers. That is something that would, would transform the entire ecosystem for taxpayers, knowing that they have an independent body that has unlimited access to the evidence. And if we could minimise the number of disputes, that would be a win for everyone.